Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jay, and guys, today I have a lovely book haul for you. It has been a hot minute since I've done a book haul, mostly because book hauls are strange videos to make. I will be honest. Um, I just, I collect books you know, one at a time, two or three at a time, not necessarily like in giant loads. I mean, I used to when I would order from Book Outlet, but I really made a solemn vow to myself that I would support local businesses when I could. Um, so I've been really trying to stick to that. So it's been sort of tough to like really know when to film a book haul when you know, I'm just always buying more books, which is really just a problem at this point. Um, but I do have a bit of a book haul for you and I don't actually know how many books I have here. Um, it's quite a stack. So I would say this is a fairly large book haul. I, it's probably not more than 15, 20, so nothing too crazy. Anyway, let's get into it. The first book that I want to talk about is Master of Sorrows, and this is by Justin Call. And first of all, let's talk about how beautiful this book is. Um, I haven't even opened, let's see. Nope, pretty, pretty standard, but um, yeah. I don't know, it's just gorgeous. And I actually saw this book talked about um, on Reagan's channel, uh, Peru's Project. So this book is very interesting because it sort of takes the trope of, you know, hero is found as a young boy, gets a wise old man for a mentor and grows up to be the hero that we all need. It takes that trope and turns it on its head and poses the question, well, what if that young boy actually ends up becoming the Dark Lord that everyone fears. So this is about a young boy named Anev, I think is how you pronounce it, Anev, Anev, I don't know. But he was believed to be executed and he ended up being raised by his parents' killers. And there is forbidden magic involved, a secret deformity, oh my god, it's thundering so hard out in the world right now where I am. So excuse that. But but yeah, as I was saying, there's secret magic involved, a secret deformity, uh, old heritage that he needs to figure out whether he can just accept himself or end up becoming a monster. So this is a thick boy, but I am very excited to get into this. I'm very interested in this trope, like being turned on its head very excited and it's beautiful. The next book that I would love to tell you about is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. Guys, if you know me, I loved, loved Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. It was one of my favorite books of last year. Loved it so, so much. So this book follows our main protagonist, Agnieszka. I don't know how to say it. Um, uh, anyway, Agnieszka's village stands right on the border of the corrupted wood and it's full of malevolent dark forces that need to constantly be kept at bay. And the only way they are able to do this is with the help of a very dark evil wizard. And in exchange for his protection, they are required to give up one woman in their village every 10 years. Well now, in this book, that 10 years is up and they need to give over one of their own. And everyone thinks it's going to be Agnieszka's best friend. And in the end, they he does not choose her best friend. So of course we're thinking, you know, I'm reading the synopsis and it's probably gonna be Agnieszka, right? Otherwise there's no story. So I am super interested in this book. It has a magical forest, wizards, villagers, it's so me, I'm so excited to read this. Ah, guys, the next book that I wanted to tell you about is another Naomi Novik book, and this is called His Majesty's Dragon. And this is actually a series, it's called um, the, the Temeraire series. I hope I said that right. I bought this because I was like, oh, I don't know, she wrote other things, but of course she did, because she's a freaking master. So this is about, aerial combat on the backs of fighter dragons in the Napoleonic Wars. So it's like a 
historical fiction, but like historical fantasy. Yeah, I am very excited to read this. First of all, dragons. Secondly, history. I graduated as a history major. My goal in life originally was to be a um, classics professor, so I was always history minded. And this is just calling my name. I'm so very excited to read this. The next book that I got recently is part of a series called The Girl Meets Duke series by Tessa Dare. Guys, I know, this is not my normal fare, honestly. I am not a big romance reader. In fact, I, yeah, it's just not my genre, guys. But I have listened to the other two books in this Girl Meets Duke series on audiobook, and it is so, 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 so good. The banter is just delicious. The steamy parts are steamy. And you know what? The writing is very, very good. And plus, it's also a period piece. It like sort of takes place maybe Regency era around that time. And I'm so into it. And so each book in this series actually centers around a different girl and a different duke. And this particular one follows Lady Penelope Campion and her new neighbor, who is of course a duke. So Lady Penelope happens to be an animal enthusiast. She takes in every stray she, she sees and she just, you know, has a full house of animals and love. However, the Duke that just moved in next door is so not into it and he demands that she clears out these rescued animals. I don't know who the heck he thinks he is to demand that, but whatever. So what she does instead is tasks him with the uh, task. <laughs> Um, to find these rescued animals homes otherwise she's keeping the animals and you know he's thinking easy peasy I've done I've been to war like there's there's just all sorts of things that he's done that has to be harder than finding animals homes but of course it's not that easy and of course they're probably gonna fall in love and it's probably gonna be amazing so the next books that I, and yes, I said books as in plural, the next books that I would love to um, share with you is the um, Dragon Riders of Pern. Now, these are interesting books. I got them off thrift books because I don't know, they're pretty old and I figured I could get them used. And I, and these are by Anne McCaffrey. And if any of you guys know who Anne McCaffrey is, you know that she's the dragon riding queen. She loves some stories about dragons, let's be honest. Now, I thought I had read this series, which is why I bought all three of them. And um, turns out, no, turns out I have never read th these books. Books. And this is actually more of like a sci-fi slash fantasy book. So it is about dragon riders who protect the planet of Pern. Um, and that's kind of, I guess, where it gets sci-fi is that it's out in space in a different planet. I don't really know, guys, um, but it has dragons. I'm into it. The next book that I got recently is Boundary Sci by Robert Jackson Bennett. Is that, is that the name? <laughs> the, the three names always mess me up. Um, so Boundary Side follows our main protagonist, Sansia, I believe is how it's pronounced. Uh, I could have that wrong. So Sansia is a very skilled thief. Um, she has a particular power and knack for it, but she gets sent on a heist that she doesn't really know all the details. And it turns out that she steals an artifact of immense power, something that is coveted by all the merchant lords in her city. And so once she finds out that what this artifact is, she also finds out that everyone is against her and wants her dead and the artifact for themselves. And what's very interesting about this book and one of the reasons why I picked it up is that there is a magic system in here called scribing and it basically is about um, the art of using coded commands to imbue everyday objects with sentience. I shit you not, that's what it says on the back. Um, I, yeah, so it sounds like, you know, they can spell inanimate objects to do things for them 
And so I thought that was really cool. It sounds like a very like language based sort of magic. And I mean, your girl reads, so I'm into that. Yeah, I'm excited to get into this. Uh, this is another book that was recommended by Reagan from Peru's Project. Um, if you guys don't know her channel, I don't know how, but check it out. I'll link it down below. She's phenomenal. But yeah, I'm very excited about this. The next book also has a very interesting and fully sort of thought out magic system. So this is the book The Well of Ascension. It is the part two in the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. The first book is called um, The Final Empire. And I won't talk about this particular book because there might be spoilers for those of you who have not read The Final Empire part one to the Mistborn trilogy. Um, so what the Mistborn series is basically about is, well at least the first book was about this magic system called Allomancy and it's the magic of metals and it's very interesting and the entire first book is about overthrow, uh, sort of like a heist with a, involving a thieving crew to overthrow the Lord Ruler. And he's like this ridiculous giant tyrant that has ruled for thousands of years. So that book was really interesting, really compelling. The ending was just like nuts. And so I was like, well, now I have to read the second and here we are, need to read it, need to hurry up and read it. So the next book is actually another Brandon Sanderson book because after I read Mistborn and especially after I read Skyward, because guys, Skyward was phenomenal, I had to get more Brandon Sanderson. Um, so the hype is real with this author and I got the Way of King. So this is the first book in the Stormlight Archives and I would tell you in my own words what it's about but I'll be honest I have no freaking clue. So what I'm gonna do because even the back tells us nothing like I still don't really understand what the book is about. Um, I'm actually gonna read on my phone on my Goodreads app what it's about because it gives it a more comprehensive view of the story. So it says, according to mythology, mankind used to live in the Trancoline Halls, basically heaven. Um, but then the void bringers assaulted and captured heaven, casting out God and men. Men took root on Roshar, the world of storms, and the void bringers followed. They came against man 10,000 times. Oh, they came against man 10,000 times. To help them cope, the Almighty gave men powerful suits of armor and mystical weapons known as shard blades. Led by 10 angelic heralds and 10 orders of knights known as radiance, mankind finally won. Or so the legends say. To Whoa, my lights turned off. So sorry, my lights turned off. I told you the thunder was real. Anyway, where was I in this like vastly complicated uh, plot line? I mean, she thick, so it's it's a thing. Okay, 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 back to it. Um, so shard blades. Today, the only remnants of those supposed battles are the shard blades, the possession of which man makes a man nearly invincible on the battlefield. The entire world is at war with itself and has been for centuries since the radiance turned against mankind. Um, okay, I'm not going to read anymore because it's long and I hate it when people do that. They read things on camera. Um, so. As you can tell, it is a very complicated, rich fantasy, and I'm excited. I'm excited for this book. The next book that I want to share with you is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Now guys, I know that there has been some massive hype around this book, and probably with good reason, because it sounds amazing. Every time I read, I did it again. It, it fluttered, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Things are happening out in the world. But anyway, every time I read the synopsis for this, I'm like, why haven't I read this yet? This sounds insane and it sounds beautiful. So this is about a boy named Zachary Ezra Rollins. And Zachary has always sort of felt out of place in this world. And he always feels like he's meant for somewhere else. Well, one day he finds a mysterious book in his campus library and he just is swept away by this sprawling story in this book. And then something strange happens. He finds 
a story from his childhood, which is strange to find in this book because this book is much, much older than he is. And then he meets two special individuals that whisk him away on to an adventure and he finally finds a door to a land that feels like it's been calling to him for years and years. Guys, it just, it sounds beautiful. My heart is just like calling out to it. I'm so excited to read this. The next book that I picked up recently is Howl's Moving Castle. A friend of mine recommended the book. I still haven't seen the Studio Ghibli movie, even though I'm a big Studio Ghibli fan, um, but that's because I've been meaning to read this book and I've just never gotten around to it. So this is about a young girl named Sophie. She's the eldest of three daughters and I guess in this world that means she's just destined to fail at life. And of course that's how this book starts out. She sort of attracts the ire of this crotchety witch and the witch puts a curse on her so that she is transformed into an old woman and the only way to break the curse that secret lies in the ever moving castle of the wizard howl and she has to go and see what's in his moving castle so i'm very excited to read this because i feel like it sounds like a romance i feel like I feel that in my bones, but maybe I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm not. Plus I love some wizards, guys. Wizards, yeah. The next book that I picked up recently is Gideon the Ninth by Tamison Muir. Oh my God, that name <laughs> really messed me up. Now, this is another book that has plenty of hype, especially because the second book in the series has just come out. And all I know about this book is that it's about lesbian necromancers in space. And weirdly enough, one of my friends who really only reads like super intense fantasies and sci-fis, he picked this up and he enjoyed it. And that's high praise because he is not a young adult fiction reader. So I'm excited to get into this and see what it's all about. Okay, the next book is actually another Brandon Sanderson book. Um, this was recommended to me by a friend who is a big fan of Brandon Sanderson and it is Elantris. So another example of a book that I still don't know what the heck is going on by reading the back. So I'm gonna read the online description of it on my phone. So sorry, bear with me. So. The story follows three main characters, Prince Rowden of Aralon, Princess Serene of Todd, and the priest Rathen of Fjordel. At the beginning of the story, Rowden is cursed by an ancient transformation known as the Shoud and secretly exiled to the city of Elantris just days before his betrothed princess Serene of Todd arrives for their wedding. As Rowden tries to avoid gangs, keep his sanity, and unite the people of Elantris, Serene must cope with the loss of her husband-to-be and try to save Erlon from Rathen, a priest tasked with converting all of Erlon to the religion of Fjordel or dooming it to destruction. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I still don't really know what Elantris is necessarily about but I heard good things about it, so we're just gonna go with it. The next book I actually won from a giveaway, really exciting, the only giveaway I've ever won, at least that I know of, and this is Ramsey Campbell's The Wise Friend. I'm very excited about this because it's a horror novel, I got it for free, and this book follows the protagonist, his name is Patrick, and he was very close with his aunt Thelma, who is an artist who was very drawn to the occult. So drawn, she would visit magical sites and collect artifacts and bring them home with her. Well, when she dies, Patrick notices that all the artifacts just disappear. So in order to find answers, he starts going to these magical sites and the only thing that he finds there is absolute terror. And he, of course, has brought his son with him and the, just the horror keeps continuing. I'm so excited about this. I don't know why there's an upside down cross here, but it makes me very excited to my soul. I don't know, I'm just into it. So 
yeah. The next book that I want to talk about is Scream All Night by Derek Millman. And now this book, I found out about it through Cameron Chaney's booktube and he mostly does horror. He's great. I'll link him down below. But the interesting thing about this book is that, you know, as most books have reviews on the back somewhere, this is a horror novel, I think, but it doesn't say anything about being scary. It mostly says things like absurd and hilarious and a good time. So I'm wondering if it's like a horror funny type of thing. You know how there are funny horror movies. This might be a funny horror book. Anyway, the main protagonist, his name is Dario Hayward. And I'm wondering if that's actually a tribute to Dario Argento, the famous horror director. Um, but his father is the owner of Moldavio Studios and also a famous horror director of B movies. And so he swore that he would never go back to those studios. And one day he is invited by his brother to come back home to sort of do this like mysterious ceremony um, and tribute to one of his father's first films about a mummy. And so immediately, you know, Dario, it just get, ends up getting swept up in all of the ridiculousness of the Moldavia Studios sort of um, lineage all over again. Things he sort of has tried to escape. All those horrors, real and imagined, come sweeping back to him. So. I'm very interested in this book. I don't know what to expect, but I've heard good things, so yeah. The next book was actually a very lovely gift from a very lovely friend, um, and she sent it to me right after my best doggo buddy, Max, passed away, moved on over the Rainbow Bridge, and she thought that a nice horror novel would be a good distraction. And I haven't read it yet, but I think that her sentiments are right on the money. So she sent me the short stories of H.P. Lovecraft, and she also included this very lovely like tarot card. No, I don't think it's a tarot card. Anyway, it's a spooky ribbon. It's very cute. Um, I'm very excited to use it as a bookmark. But these are stories of H.P. Lovecraft. And I, as someone who loves horror as much as I do, I have not read anything by H.P. Lovecraft. And that's unfortunate because most of horror culture is um, influenced by him. So the stories in here are the classic The Call of Cthulhu, The Dunwich Horror, The Color Out of Space, and The Shadow Over Innsmouth. And I understand that these are some of his more famous stories, especially The Call of Cthulhu, so I'm very excited to read this. Um, yeah. Okay guys, that's it for my book haul. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. It helps me know if you are enjoying my content and it helps my channel out. And hit that notification bell, subscribe, so you always know when I've got good things coming to you. Bye y'all.